Hey guys, William Holtz with Lake TV for story time with Will and friends. Again, it's Thursday. Our week's almost over. The weekend right around the corner. But first, the moment you've all been waiting for, story time with Will and friends. And we take another trip to the Ozarks Amphitheater. This time it's Tom Abbott, our good friend, joining us. What's going on, Tom? Hey, William. How are you out in Lake TV land? We're good, man. We're uh, staying safe, staying healthy, social distancing. The guys got their distance the way they prefer it all the time. So they really like me having to take <laughs> these extra safety measures. You know, it's killing me, Tom, because I can't hug people. Right, right. I know it's extremely hard on you. The rest of your crew is loving this. <laughs> You're loving this. In case we had to get close, I wouldn't wrap my arms around you with a big old bear hug like I typically do. Yeah, we well, we've got over 10,000. We've got over 10,000 seats here to distance ourselves from, so we're, we're pretty good out here at the amphitheater. Looking good. I think I think once this all settles down, we got to get some workouts done out there and some yoga sessions. That place is awesome. Yep. A lot, lot of uses out here. All right. So, Tom, the moment you've been waiting for, uh, you've been excited, <laughs> and I was like, well, we had Mary Kay do a few, you know, the first week. We needed to mix it up, but... We've all been waiting for this. Without further ado, the moment Mary Kay, Tom, the Lake of the Ozarks, and ourselves have been waiting for. Tom Abbott, our guest on Story Time with Will and Friends. Tom, take it away. Your guest reader for today. Today, Lake TV Land, I'm going to be le reading Waggles and the Dog Catcher. This book is probably from the 60s, and it's a very well worn softback book written by Marion Belden Cook, and it was published by Scholastic. Now, any of you that have been to school in the last 50 years know exactly who Scholastic is. So uh, remember, we used to get these on almost on a weekly basis. So, one of my favorites, um, as you know, we love dogs here at the amphitheater. So uh, and we, we're not real big fans of dog catchers. So I think you'll like how this one ends. So we'll start out with Waggles was a little white dog. He had no home, but he had lots of fun just the same. He went up and down the streets of the town, wagging his tail and looking for things to carry. He liked to carry things, a bone, a glove, a shoe, a newspaper, or even a stick. It made him feel very important. One Saturday morning, Waggles was trotting along Main Street. He was carrying a bone. The sidewalks were crowded with people, and all of them were on their way to Sweezy and Swenson's department store. Everybody should have a Sweezy and Swenson's. Waggles ran ahead of them, and when the door was opened, he hurried in, and he ran up one aisle and down another. Waggles was so excited by all of the noise and all of the people that he dropped his bone. He ran up and down the aisles looking for it. He ran up and down one aisle and stopped at a counter piled high with hats. Women were grabbing them, trying them on, and looking at themselves in mirrors. As Waggles stood there, a small blue hat fell on the floor. Waggles picked it up, and now he had something to carry again. The floor walkers saw Waggles. Stop, thief, he shouted. Stop, thief, again. Waggles ran down the aisle. The floor walker ran after him. Stop, thief, the floor walker kept shouting. Waggles reached the front door. The, door walker, the floor walker was close behind him. Waggles dropped the hat and hurried, hurried out of Sweezy and Swenson's department store. Just as he reached the sidewalk, he heard the floor walker shout, Hi, dog catcher? On the sidewalk, Waggle saw a man with a net. Catch that little white dog, the floor walker yelled. Waggles did not wait. He ran down the street and into the alley. The dog catcher was right at his heels. Soon, Waggles came to a coal bin. That tells you how old this book is. <laughs> he could hide there. He jumped in and sank down into the slippery coal. It almost covered him. He stayed there for a few minutes, and when he came out, the dog catcher was waiting. Do you see a little white dog, he asked the boy. No, I don't, said the boy. I only see a little black dog. The dog catcher looked at Waggles, who was black all over from the cold. I'm looking for a little white dog, he said, but I will catch this black one instead. He made a dash at Waggles with his net, but he was not quick enough. Waggles ran out of the alley and around to Main Street again. Here in the crowd, he soon got away from the dog catcher. Go, Waggles. Waggles came to the town hall. A man was putting whitewash on the brick walk. He was using a big brush. Waggles stopped to watch. Soon the man put down his brush and sat on a bench to rest. Waggles picked up the brush by the handle and stood wagging his tail. He was happy because he had something to carry again. He looked around. The dog catcher was coming. You see a little black dog? All black? He asked the man on the bench. No, I don't, said the man. 
I only see a little black dog with a white tail. The dog catcher looked at Waggles, who had been wagging his tail in the whitewash. I'm looking for a little black dog, he said, but instead I'll catch this black one with the white tail. Waggles dropped the brush and hurried away. The dog catcher ran after him. Waggles ran around to the back of the town hall. He jumped over the wall and into a garden. A boy was watering the flowers. You need a bath, the boy said. Stand still and I will give you one. And he squirted Waggles all over. Just then the dog catcher came over the wall. Did you see a little black dog with a white tail? I asked the boy. I did, said the boy, but I don't see him now. The little white, this little dog is white all over. The dog catcher got down to his knees and peered at Waggles. Then he got up and said, I'm looking for a little black dog with a white tail, but I'm going to catch this little all white one. Waggles did not wait to hear anything else. He ran out of the garden. He trotted past the town hall. Then he hurried up Main Street. Soon he came to a meat market. The door was open. He sniffed the wonderful smells. He went right in. Maybe he could find a bone to pick up. At the counter, the butcher was cutting chops, steaks, and chickens. He put them all in nice little baskets. This is Mr. Frisbee's, this is, there is Mrs. Frisbee's chicken, the butcher told the clerk, and he pointed to a small basket on the floor. Take it out to her right away. She is waiting in her car. Very similar to what we're doing today, folks. Waggles wagged his tail. He picked up the basket and carried it out of the store. Come back here, shouted the butcher's clerk, running after him, but Waggles did not stop. A blue car with a chauffeur was standing beside the curb. The door was open, and Waggles could see Mrs. Frisbee sitting in the back seat. What a cute little dog, said Mrs. Frisbee. As Waggles started to carry the basket to her, he heard a voice behind him. There's that little white dog, and down came the dog catcher's neck. Up jumped Waggles. All the dog catcher got in his net was the basket with Mrs. Frisbee's chicken. Waggles ran around behind the meat market and jumped into an ash can to hide. The can was almost full of soft gray ashes. Hey, have you seen a little white dog? He heard the, the dog catcher ask. Waggles poked his head out over the top of the trash can. I saw the dog catcher talking to the butcher's clerk. Waggles jumped out of the ash can and ran past it. A little white dog came this way, said the butcher's clerk, but I don't see him now. All I see is that little gray dog. I'm looking for a little white dog, said the white dog catcher. Then he started to chase Waggles, but I will catch this little gray one instead. Waggles dashed out onto the sidewalk with the dog catcher after him. He ran past the meat market and around the town hall. He jumped over the wall again into the garden. The boy was still watering the flowers. Must've been doing some social distancing. The boy laughed when he saw Waggles. You don't, you need another bath. Stand still. Again, he squirted the water on Waggles. He squirted water all over his head and back and tail and legs, just in the dog catcher glimpsed over the wall. Have you seen a little gray dog? He asked the boy. I've only seen this little white dog, said the boy. The dog catcher bent over and looked at Waggles. I'm trying to find a little gray dog, but I will catch you instead. He lifted his net in the air and brought it down. Whoosh but Waggles was too quick for him. Waggles jumped aside, ran out of the garden and down the street. The dog catcher came after him. Waggles ran on and on and on. He came to another part of town. Here, the houses and gardens were large and handsome. One garden had a high black iron fence around it. Waggles trotted through the gateway. He felt tired after all the running and he had done that day and decided to lie down on, near the fence and take a nap. A man was painting the fence. Soon, Waggles heard voices. Did you see a little white dog? The dog catcher asked the man. No, I don't, said the painter. I only see a little white dog with big black spots. The dog catcher looked at Waggles, who was splashed with black paint from the painter's brush. I'm looking for a little white dog, but I will catch this one with the big black spots. The dog catcher came running through the gateway, but Waggles did not wait for him. He raced across the lawn. Just then, a big blue car turned into the gateway. In the back seat was Mrs. Fisbee. Waggles ran after the car, and the dog catcher ran after Waggles. The car stopped in, one of, in front of the house, and the chauffeur opened the door for Mrs. Fisbee. Waggles hopped into the car and picked up the small basket near her feet. Then he jumped out and carried it to the door. A maid opened the door, and Waggles trotted in. He saw some curtains and hid behind him. Through a crack between the curtains, he saw the dog catcher and Mrs. Fisbee standing at the door. You see a little white dog with a black spot, the dog catcher asked. Mrs. Fisbee looked all around the room. No, I don't see any little dog at all. 
And that was true. Not even the tip of Waggle's tail showed from behind the curtains. I'm sure he came in here, said the dog catcher. I don't see him anywhere. Please go away, said Mrs. Fisby. So the dog catcher went away, grumbling and waving his net. As soon as he was gone, Waggles came out from behind the curtains. He was wagging his tail and he was still holding the basket. What a helpful little dog you are, said Mrs. Fisby. You may carry my chicken to the kitchen. Then she said to the maid, he smells of paint. Please clean him off. We will give this little dog a white, little white dog a home. So Waggles came, in, came to live with Mrs. Fisby. He was very happy. He wagged his tail and carried things every day. Each morning, he brought in the newspaper and carried it upstairs to Mrs. Fisby. He also brought in her letters. Whenever she dropped her knitting bag or her glasses case, he picked it up and brought it to her. Almost every afternoon, he went for a ride with Mrs. Fisby and her chauffeur. He was, dre she was, he was dressed in a red coat, and when people saw him, they did not know that it was the homeless little dog that used to run up and down the streets. Waggles always looked at the car window, out the car window, and whenever he saw the dog catcher, he barked. But the dog catcher never bothered to look at him. He was much too busy trying to find a little white dog, a little black dog, a little black dog with a white tail, another little white dog, another little gray dog, and another little white dog, a little white dog with big black spots. That's the end. So... He lived happily ever after in Mrs. Fisby's house. Oh, what a story. Tom, and you are an impressive reader. I didn't know I was expecting that uh, in that <laughs> regard. That was awesome. Hey, do well, us man a favor. Many Can we get a little look around, like, what view you've got right there? Can you grab the camera and just kind of show everybody sure. what that place sure. looks like? Sure. Oh, uh, well, I'll look back over my shoulder here. We're ap yeah, actually – on one of the uh, spotlight towers, one of four spotlight platforms that we have at the top of the bowl. And we're looking back at the 5,000 square foot stage. One of the things down here, we are making some improvements, even though, you know, we're under a, you know, a little bit of stress in the country right now. We're making arrangements to be open for our first concert. So we've moved our concession stands back here in the plaza, doing some changes around. So all the things going on here at the amphitheater in the month of April and May to get ready for our first show. One thing I know you guys are working regardless of what's going on, ready to, for an awesome season. Guys, thinking about you, appreciate all you do for us. Uh, we'll see you guys soon, my friend. I look forward to coming out for a show this season. Yep, same thing to you, William, and your crew at Lake TV. We love you guys. All right, man, right back at you. Thank you so there, much. Everyone. We'll see you very soon, Tom. Appreciate it, brother. See ya. That is Tom Abbott with the Ozarks Amphitheater, one of our favorite places right here at Lake of the Ozarks. Hope you guys are staying safe, practicing your social distancing, enjoying some time with the ones you love most. For Lake TV, I'm William Holtz. Until tomorrow at 3, God bless.